Good morning. We're very pleased to have you at yet another session of Discovery. My name is Emily Grenier and I am the Engagement Manager at Efficiency Canada. Efficiency Canada operates within Carleton University and we acknowledge that uh, the location of our campus sits on the traditional unceded territories of the Algonquin Nation. In doing so, we acknowledge we have a responsibility to the Algonquin people and a responsibility to adhere to Algonquin cultural protocols. So I'm pleased to welcome our three guests today. We have Robert and Christine from Prism Engineering, as well as Damien from BOMA, the Building Owners and Managers Association of British Columbia. So in this presentation, they are going to discuss the 11 topic areas outlined in BOMA's e-energy training, which are integral to identifying and implementing energy saving opportunities in buildings. So I think Damien is starting and over to you. Great. Thanks very much, Emily, and great to see a bunch of names popping up that I recognize. And I'd also like to acknowledge that I'm presenting today from the unceded traditional territories of the Musqueam, Musqueam Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh people. We'll talk today about our e-energy training for building operators, and then Christine and Robert are going to go through uh, a little bit more detail. If we look at considering why this training is important. A lot of buildings are designed, built, and occupied before they are properly commissioned and before there's a plan in place for their operation and maintenance. Often commissioning is the easy thing to cut from the budget when cost overruns are there. And so we noticed many years ago that this was happening. And so I'll talk a little bit about why we decided to do energy training from BOMA's perspective. Christine's going to go over the course review, looking at all the modules. And then Robert's going to talk a little bit more about our participant feedback and some case studies. And then, of course, as Emily mentioned, we have the opportunity for questions and answers from all of you. Just to quickly introduce ourselves, I'm Damien Stathenikos. We're one of the country's oldest provincial associations representing the commercial real estate space. Our members are everything from large international property owners to smaller regional based building owners and managers. Christine and Robert will introduce themselves as they start their own sections. So why e-energy? It's no secret that building operators play a crucial role in energy management. And we identified a need for building operators to have that deeper understanding of the role they play in helping reduce a building's emissions. They are key to ensuring that building equipment operates efficiently and as intended. And so looking at this key audience, we really identified that not only are there opportunities for operational efficiencies, so the kind of the low hanging fruit that the building operator sees on a day-to-day -day basis, but also their role in being involved in larger capital projects. Training for building operators also increases the buy-in. They're the people operating the equipment on a daily basis. And so if a building operator understands their role in a retrofit investment, the likelihood of success is much, much higher. We did a, a program a few years ago looking at building tune-ups. And the number one piece of feedback that we heard from the consulting firm that we hired was the operators were overriding the system. So they got a tenant complaint from the eighth floor. Well, the HVAC system wasn't to their liking, so they overrode the control system. Or they put a shim in one of the vents because it wasn't working a few years ago and they've just never bothered to go back. So empowering operators with education is really crucial in making sure that you get not only those operational efficiencies, but a deeper understanding of their role in capital retrofit projects. So we heard from our members that they wanted flexible options to train their building staff. Building operations staff can't take extended time away from a building for training. Those of you who are in operations know that even when you're away from a building, you're getting calls, you're being asked questions. It's really challenging. So we wanted to create a program that also matched the needs of contemporary adult learners so that this was something that could be accessible online. It was able to be stop and start. You didn't need to spend a whole day doing something. You could dip in and dip out. And also we wanted to make it relevant across lots of different sectors where the fundamental skills and knowledge would be the same, whether that's education, 
healthcare, parks and recreation, any kind of facilities management. And the other element here is that there is a desperate need for trained building operators. In British Columbia, like many other provinces, we have a shortage. And the province of BC, in fact, has identified facility operation and maintenance managers as a high opportunity occupation. And in their latest labor market outlook, they identified the need for almost 5,500 jobs in this category by 2031. So this is also a reason why providing additional training for those who are already in the industry is a way of recruiting, retaining, keeping those people, upskilling them to ensure that we can meet this need and ensure that buildings are able to benefit from their knowledge and their expertise. So I'm gonna hand over to Christine now and she'll talk about the course overview and what it looks like. Great, thanks Damien. So briefly before we jump into that, hello everyone, I'm Christine Obi. I am an engagement specialist here at Prism Engineering on the sustainability team and heavily involved in a number of different trainings that we offer, e-energy being one of them. So Robert will tell you a little bit more about his background and in terms of developing the technical content for the course shortly. So what does the course look like? In terms of an overall sort of sense of what it is, energy management, our approach here is really to recognize that it's more than just technical. It's more than just systems. And to successfully implement energy management and energy saving initiatives in an organization and in a building, you need to also consider people and the organizational concepts and tools. So the training covers those pieces as well. However, the focus really has been on high-rise and commercial buildings, and you can see a number of different commercial property management groups that have taken part in the training, but absolutely relevant to other areas as well. So in terms of the structure and the content, there are 11 modules. We've also provided some additional flexibility recently in the course in terms of being able to sign up for just one module or more than one. You can pick and choose, or you can sign up for the entire course. So we heard from folks that they were interested in some areas, but maybe not others. So that's something that the course has recently been adapted to accommodate. Another piece that, as Damien mentioned, and recognizing that building operators and those in operations and maintenance sometimes have to step away. So being able to stop and start the module in your own time and be able to come back to it was really a key feature that we wanted to make sure was included in the course. And then in terms of following best practices for adult learning, there are some quizzes in there to make sure that the key concepts have really been learned before moving on to the next step, as well as an overall final exam for those participants that are completing the entire set of modules. So for those of you that are interested or may have the question around how long does it take to complete the course? Approximately 30 hours. So what exactly is included in the course? What are those 11 modules? We actually have a module zero that we've included as well because it really is just an introduction to the training to give you a little bit more information on it. And then we dive into energy management overview. What is it? And some energy basics, definitely talking about metering and building, the importance of measurements, and then a deep dive into a lot of the different building systems that are going to be relevant for building operators to be knowing about and looking for savings related to lighting, electrical, HVAC, building controls, and then heating and cooling systems. And as mentioned, we don't want to forget the people and the organizational aspects. So we have a couple of modules that really focus in on those pieces as well, some behavioral opportunities as well as how do you get buy-in as an operator or maybe as someone else. It doesn't have to just be an operator that is looking to sell the project. We recognize that normally that is actually outside of scope for that role, but not impossible. We'll tell you a little bit more about that later. So in terms of the overall sort of structure of each of the modules, it's generally follows this flow where we have an introduction to the topic. There's some technical basics that are covered. There's then the specifics of how can you measure that particular topic. And then it dives into operations and maintenance or low cost best practices. So looking at things that are easier wins. And then also looking at things that might be bigger picture projects. It might be involved a little bit more with some financial input and those retrofit opportunities. And then as we mentioned, definitely a module quiz to make sure that the key concepts of the course are being learned by the participants. So we're not going to go through the details of every single course, but we did want to provide a few examples for you just to give a bit of a sense of what the modules actually cover and look like. So the energy management overview is really learning about what it is, why it's important, and who the main players are. And it really sets the foundation for the course in terms of why are you 
in wanting to learn about this and how is it going to be helpful. A deep dive into lighting systems, as with all of our more technical building systems topics, is really looking at the fundamentals of it, as well as the operations. This one in particular looks at measuring using a light meter, but then all of our other building systems topics will look at identifying the operational and technical opportunities, as well as potential savings from each. So heating systems follows a similar structure. And then on more of the sort of people side of things, module 10 dives into energy saving areas that are related to actions and behaviors. So things where you can look at how to engage your occupants as well as your operators to just understand a little bit more about energy efficiency, learn how to engage them in an overall sort of from a culture perspective, as well as then looking at some opportunities, whether it's turning off lights or other kind of visible things within a building. And then lastly, in terms of project examples that we wanted to share with you is around selling the project. So I love this statement here. It says great energy saving ideas often get stalled due to a lack of buy-in. So I think that's probably relevant and people can relate to that. So this is just a way to get a bit of a sense of looking at project costs and benefits, building a business case, and then being able to successfully move that project forward within your organization. So I will pause there as I pass it over to Robert to get a brief intro from him and he'll take us into some course experience. Great. Thanks, Christine and Damien for leading us off. Maybe Damien, I'll do a little bit of an intro in terms of my background. I've been practicing energy management since the days of a co-op student. And I, I mentioned that because one of my first projects was when I was working in Toronto for an engineering firm called Energy Interface, one of the early day firms of energy management. And we had a performance contract with the Waterloo County Board of Education. And they had a control, they were, had a, a audits and retrofits that were going on. And we went into interview building operators. And we started to go in and see that there was schedules for everything, but it was programmed from 0000 to 2359. Everything was running essentially flat out all the time. And it opened my eyes in early days to the potential for getting operators involved. And so we, we focused on building operator manuals and training and interaction and uh, competitions and ways of really harnessing the power and the knowledge of the building operators. And that's what we're trying to do here with this online course. So the method that we use is to try to engage them as best you can in an online environment. We prepared this course many years before COVID. And so you'll see some screenshots coming up just to show you how we navigate that online experience. So first of all, obviously the normal tracking of progress and seeing where you're at and what your percent completion is. You'll also notice that we have the availability for other materials. There's spreadsheets, there's figures and charts that we'll able to add as materials to the course. Next, you'll see the graphics that we're using. It's not a talking head where you listen to someone preach about a certain topic. What we do is we try to really make it interactive. The animation and graphics have been added Added to try to simulate building systems. And so here we're explaining fluid power. You see a boiler and you see the water moving throughout the building. And we use that animation along with a downloadable spreadsheet to be able to run through some sample calculations for that. So you see that kind of rich graphics. You'll see that in the next couple of slides as well. The animation, often it's really hard to define what power factor is and people see it on their bill, but they don't know what it means. And so we try to use different ways of animating that and showing what lagging and leading power factor could look like. Things that I did in a classroom for years, but it was wonderful to be able to have the resources of putting it online. And I'm a big proponent of in-person learning and classroom learning, and I've delivered literally almost dozens of workshops across Canada. And I was uh, really able to take some of that and bring it into the course, but also to add things that we couldn't do online. For example, the refrigeration cycle and have this great tool that Intercan had. We brought that into the course to explain what a condenser is, what an evaporator is, compressor and an expansion valve, and, and use that to throughout wherever we can. So really good bringing in other resources where possible, having examples of an HVAC system, where we're looking at supply and return air and what the components are and what, what the function of the cooling coil is and what you need to look at from a maintenance perspective on why cleaning that coil is important and what static pressure does to the energy use of that system. So those are all examples of how we build that into the course. And not only from a system perspective, but also to look at the impact of weather and climate and the building's balance point temperature and how it responds to outside conditions. Those are all things that we can animate and show with these kind of graphics that you're getting to see here. So it's not perfect, but we have heard a lot of great feedback. I feel that the course is really fundamental. It may not have the latest on the latest heat recovery chiller technology, 
But what it does do is it explains why a chiller is important, what the components of a chiller are, how you maintain a chiller, and then uh, the operator that is in a building that has a heat recovery chiller installation happening has a better sense of what that function is and hopefully will not look at delaying and, and overriding some of those set points as we heard earlier. Some of the feedback that we've heard is, just give you a couple of quotes here, at least come directly from participants. I found the BOMA e-energy training course to be very comprehensive. I love the pictures and videos used and explaining concepts and a good course for building operators. But more than just comments, what we like to see is how people feel that we've helped to increase their competencies. And so on a scale of five, we ask people to rate themselves before the course and after on a number of attributes. The one that Christy mentioned earlier, selling the project. This person was an on-site energy manager from Efficiency PEI. I increased their rating from a three to a five. I learned how to get stakeholders involved in the energy efficient programs and how to sell a project to management. So you'll notice people uh, coming up here, operators from right across the country, operations staff, not only building operators, but service technicians in this case, found a large increase in confidence overall. We'll see people from different regions on the next slide. Back to Warrington PCI, or this one from a building operator. I'm more aware of equipment and its function. And one of the slides that Christine presented, the module structure, I just want to reinforce, that's in every module. So we start with the basics. We talk about what they can do now, and we look at how they buy retrofit potential or understand retrofits that their engineering consultants or others are proposing for their building. And then it's about how they can really synthesize all of the above. Next example is a rating where overall they increase their competencies from three to five. This comes from Alberta, a building service technician. I like your strong message about the best energy upgrade a building could have. Train the operators and educate the people. Yeah, there really needs to be more than just the concept of putting more efficient equipment or lower carbon using equipment in a building for sustainability. This one from Quadrille. Everyone is involved in energy management and an operator has a big role to enlighten everyone in simple, practical terms. Those are his terms or her terms, enlighten everyone. Funny enough, we reached out to this operator and uh, found out that this lighting example that they brought up is that they were part of a lighting retrofit for the building and they recognized that the stairwells were excluded. And they found that these are like operating 24 seven and with their own initiative, they looked at a bi-level control system to put in and retrofit the lights in the stairwells and additional savings, not huge savings from this, but their own initiative that they were really proud of. And then they can take that to, to their peers and to their management team and say, hey, I, I'm contributing to this as well. Nice to see them taking the concepts of the course and building it into their daily work. I mentioned earlier challenges. This is one that feeds from eEnergy, not directly participants of eEnergy, but Colliers did a session out in the West Coast where they surveyed the training needs of their building operators and we helped to run four sessions based on some of the concepts in the energy course, but they also tracked the actions that people were taking and had a contest. And they put this friendly competition between the staff members. Those are just an example of a lunch and learn where they had about 50 operators in the room. They brought everyone together on four consecutive months. And we looked at the results in those buildings through our energy tracking program, Puma, and found over $140,000 of savings identified through those measures after accounting for and removing the retrofits in the capital program. This works, that's the message. It really matters, it makes a big impact. And if we're trying to reduce carbon, reduce energy and save money. We need to think about the people and we need to think about the operators and what they do to contribute to that. So we do have a link for the course where you can find out more. You can watch your own videos. With that, I'll turn it back to Christine and Emily who are going to navigate us through the Q&A. Thank you. That was a really impressive presentation, but also a very impressive training program, very technical. I'm definitely impressed. So we do have a few questions in the Q&A. So the first one that came up was, how is this course different from ASHRAE's High Performance Building Operator Certification? I can jump yes. in. I haven't taken that certification for ASHRAE, so I can't answer that honestly. But I can say that the fact that we bring in the behavioral aspects, the selling, the people side is a big part of it. We worked with colleagues, some of you might know, Stephen Dixon in Ontario and Stiano Dupani in Quebec. And we looked at what the three of us as consultants across the country are doing and, and teaching and learning. And uh, we've incorporated what I feel is some of the best in Canada. We do have Canadian utility examples. ASHRAE is obviously North American and world. We have the rates and the units that are from Canada. We don't have the dry conditions of Texas and we do know about cold weather conditions. This is a Canadian course for a Canadian audience, and it's practical and hands-on as opposed to maybe a bit more theoretical. It, and I can't do a side-by-side -side with ASHRAE fairly because I think that I'm sure ASHRAE 
this course offers other benefits too. Thanks, Robert. We have a question that was upvoted by two people. So three people want to know what are their requirements to enroll? Yeah, it's really open to anyone. There is a certain level of technical knowledge, but I feel that the course material, I'm not a technical person and I've done several of the modules and I didn't find it to be too complicated. And as Robert said, because there's also elements of making the business case, getting behavioral change, those are accessible really to anyone. And also a reason why we have those different modules. You don't need to take every single module. And that's a great element as well. If you've been in a role, let's say for a few years, but you just want to refresh something on lighting or HVAC, you can just take that module. You don't need to take all of them. Or maybe that your organization is going to be looking at analyzing potential capital investment projects. You can just take the module on getting buy-in or building the business case. So it's really meant to be accessible for anyone. Thanks, Damien. Jesse Rowe is in Alberta and is wondering, how do companies and operators gain access to the training? How is it promoted in the marketplace and what can be done to increase the use of this tool? I mentioned that we had partnerships and still do with the BOMA associations across Canada. And in Alberta, there's both the Calgary and Edmonton branches and we do track registration separately for Alberta North and Alberta South and look at uh, what's coming from each of the chapters. And so they're promoting it to their own membership through newsletters and so on. It might be time for a bit of a new push, Jesse. And I think you have relationships with both of the chapters. We can do better, I'm sure. Yeah. And just to build on what Robert said, uh, just to address your question, Jesse, like this is literally open to anyone. If you go to the link you click on it, you can sign up. All you need is a credit card. We can also do invoicing. If you've got several people who want to register at once and the company wants to just pay one invoice, we can make that happen as well. And so ultimately it's not limited geographically. Anyone across North America can take a part of this. We did have some funding from utilities previously. I don't think that the funding agreement in Alberta is still in operation. Is that right? Maybe I'll just jump in and mention the cost and utility funding that's available. Utility funding, governments and utilities in both in Ontario and BC and the federal government and provincial government in BC helped to fund this course initially and updates to it. And so we're able to provide the course at a very reasonable prices, heavily subsidized. So you're looking at each module typically being at the $100 range. Some of them are shorter and a bit, are a little bit less, but typically they're $100. If you sign up for all of them together, it's $750, which you think about like 30 plus hours of learning and the resources online for that, it's probably half or a third of the price that the market would be charging for it if it was a private sector endeavor. It really was meant to try to bring up the knowledge base across Canada building operators. Because of that funding, we got to keep it alive. You got to host it and do something. So there's cost to it, but it's quite a reasonable price for what you're getting. I guess related to that as well, Mike has a question after registration, can you keep accessing the modules and reference them after you're done the program? So we toyed around with the idea of an alumni where you can keep accessing it. I know that there's at least six month access. And Damien, I don't know what currently we're doing in terms of beyond six months. Are you aware of that? Six months is basically available for people. If people do want to go back and take a look at something afterwards, you can always just drop a note to the tech support, and I'm sure we can make that possible. Would you recommend this course for professionals working in the residential housing sector, including detached homes or multi-unit residential buildings? Absolutely. I think, as I said at the beginning of the presentation, the goal was to make something that appeals across sectors. An office building is very similar to a multi-unit residential building just with more bathrooms. So there's a lot of similarities there. Residential, there are some fundamental differences between systems for a single family home or a duplex compared to a larger, more complex facility, but certainly some of the components could be interesting. Robert, I don't know, what do you think? I think that each module builds on some basics and goes to more advanced. I we typically don't see a DDC control system in a small townhouse complex, right? You might not get the value out of the control system, but 
even cooling, even though we're talking about chillers, we also talk about refrigeration systems and we talk about rooftop units and we talk about understanding how the refrigeration system works. And it's really important to keep that outdoor condenser clean in a multi-use residential building, as well as it is to keep your cooling tower, your air-cooled chiller coils clean. The scale is different, but the importance is the same. And I, I think if you have in mind, you know, what you're looking at, what you're looking for, then you'll find some good value for it. We do have, you know, residences that have radiant heating with hot water going in, under the floor. So there is fluid you know, flow, even though in an office building, it's typically radiators and the like. So you do have parallels. To be frank, it doesn't have the specific residential examples in it. You'd have to be having your filter and your view of, hey, what can I pick out of this? Some of it's totally appropriate. Metering and billing and understanding the difference between a kilowatt and a kilowatt and a gigajoule and, and a ton of refrigeration. These are terms that any industry practitioner should really have as part of their toolkit. And the language of energy management certainly is key there for practitioners. So I think you're going to gain a lot, but you're going to find some stuff that, hey, this probably doesn't apply to that building type. And have you committed to any partnerships with energy conservation organizations across Canada who actively work with building operators and small businesses? Yeah, as Robert said earlier, we work with my counterparts all across the country to promote all sorts of energy conservation training of which e-energy training is one. BOMA members across the country take this training all the time. The small business angle is a bit different. We've not really promoted this actively with, let's say, a retail tenant or someone who's controlling their own energy systems. It's certainly an interesting idea and one we could definitely take a look at. Great. Thank you. There's one last question here. So folks, there's still a couple minutes left if you want to Add some questions to the Q&A. Uh, the last one we've got is probably an easy one. We were talking about accessing the content in the modules after six months. And if you can't do that, is there a hard copy version that you could get or a PDF of some kind to keep referencing back to the content? There are some references that are downloaded, um, some key references in the course that we provide spreadsheets and some tools that we download. But the content's so rich that we didn't want to simplify it to PDF. And we're trying to get away from paper too. This is one of the benefits of being online. And so I think either using the alumni approach or as Damien said, contacting uh, us for an extension if you wanted to have longer access. Those are all feasible. We're, we're customer friendly. Great. Thanks. Christine, you had some, a few questions that you had prepared in the presentation. Do you want to get to those? We have some time left. Sure. Yeah. We were just wondering from the group, whether or not, or what challenges would you say exist or have you experienced in training building operators? I think David makes a good comment in the chat about you know, building your course and not a lot of the students don't have knowledge of building systems. That's absolutely one of the pieces of feedback we heard, David, and why we started to look at developing this course several years ago is really teaching some of those fundamental components of building systems. I'm always amazed at how often I talk to building operators and a lot of them fall into the role. They start off in a particular maintenance role and they're good at their job. And all of a sudden someone recognizes that and they get pulled into more and more stuff, but they don't always necessarily have a deep understanding of the entire building system. So the course was designed on purpose to give people that kind of basic understanding for sure. And it's amazing how many people, not just building operators, but other people involved in the industry, they, they don't really understand the, the differences or haven't really learned the difference between a fan coil system and a VAV system, induction units, VRF. These are fundamental system types and they operate differently. And an operator needs to, if they move from one building to the next, they need to understand the subtleties of how they operate. And going from a, an older building that has constant volume reheat systems to a newer building that has VRF is night and day. And, and we really focused on making sure that we didn't just jump in with ideas. Here's what you need to do. And here's the retrofit opportunities. Instead, as we, we shared, we really spent almost a third of the content on, hey, what are the systems? How does it work? Because I think if you don't have that, then you can't make it better. So if you don't know how it's supposed to work and how it operates, you can't look for those opportunities for sustainability. You, you're just, you're still lost. So let's get that out there first. Let's understand that in a friendly way, and then let's build on it. And just building on that, what you said, Robert, I think it's also really valuable. So many property managers rely on the consultants they hire to provide advice and 
especially when we're talking about retrofitting building systems. These courses are also a great way to educate someone at that level who doesn't necessarily need to have a really deep understanding, but needs to know enough so that they can have a, a meaningful conversation with their contractor when they're looking at different systems and want to know what you're talking about so that you can evaluate properly the RFPs you're getting so that you can really make good decisions. And so that's another area where just equipping people with the tools they need to be able to make good decisions. There's some great comments here about the holistic view in the chat around looking at the building envelope and also the importance of that as part of deep retrofits. We built that in into the heating system section where we're looking at the response to the building envelope and we look at some abilities for weather strip, like operational measures around weather stripping and insulation and actions that operators can take. But we have to remember our audience in this case and we're like, okay, we're probably not going to be dealing with deep retrofits and envelope upgrades with this audience. As we progress and go deeper with how much we have to do as an industry, probably would be a good idea to add a module of the importance of the envelope and things to look at and thermography and even drone thermography, which is what we're doing now. And being able to assess those and how an operator that gets their hands on a drone thermography report can understand what to do and what the weaknesses are in the images around the roof and where you see puddling and what that does to heat loss. It's touched on, but I think you can go further. And the, the real issue is how far do you go and what is the market asking for and willing to, to sign up for? Good comments there. Great. Thank you, Robert, Christine, Damien. Thank you so much for joining us today and for the great conversation. And to the audience, thank you for the great questions and the great chat. So this session was recorded and you can also find this session and all the previous discovery sessions under the events tab on our website. So in the meantime, stay connected, join us on the discovery hub and sign up for our newsletter where you'll get all sorts of energy efficiency developments from across the country. And that's all. Thank you again so much for joining us today and happy Friday. Happy weekend, everyone. Bye.